Everybody okay? Yeah. Doing all right? You excited to be here? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Me too. Well, I got a message this morning that uh, has been a revelation to me. And I believe that it's inspired by the, the Holy Spirit. And um, some of it's simple and some of it's maybe not quite so simple, maybe to understand it first, but I believe that the Holy Spirit can reveal the meanings and everything to you, just as he did to me. Amen? Let me pray. Let me pray. Lord God, I thank you so much for your word. Lord God, I thank you for this, this inspired word, Lord, from you and this revelation you gave me, Lord God. I pray that I'm able to very plainly and easily, simply share it today, Lord God. That every ear, every hear, Lord God, would, would understand exactly what you would have them understand and not even remotely what, what I would even care to have them understand, Lord God, but it be from you and you alone. Thank you, God, that you bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, maybe remotely what I was. All right, if you turn in your Bibles with me, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians 6, 17. That's my key verse for the day. The title of my message is Declaration of the Separation. And uh, it's, you know, you'll understand in a, in a moment what that means. <laughs> The separation I'm referring to comes from this verse in 2 Corinthians 6, 17. When you're there, let me know. I still hear pages turning, so I'll wait a second. All right. First, first Corinthians, or excuse me, 2 Corinthians 6, 17. It says, did I get it right? Apparently I don't have the right verse. Is anybody else drawing a blank? Oh, I'm in the wrong, uh, wrong in the wrong chapter. <laughs> I'll just read it off the iPad. I got that one right. I'm going to get it in my paper Bible here. I knew there was a reason why I hadn't started reading yet. <laughs> God help us. Okay, there we go. Therefore, therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. God is commanding us to come out from the world and to be separate, to be set apart from the world. And to not touch unclean things. Now, we know there's more to being a Christian than that. And that's the relationship we have with Jesus and receiving him as our Savior. But we're supposed to come out from among the world and be separate. Um, this week in, in a staff meeting, or last week actually, Pastor Rick started sharing vision with us. And he's, he's sharing things that are on his heart. And uh, he said some pretty f profound statements. And they're simple. But he said this. We have to examine everything we do and make sure it is what God wants us to do. It's pretty simple, right? Do everything he tells you to do, and don't do more than you're supposed to. Don't do more than you're supposed to. That means that our human thinking and human ideologies and our own doctrines aren't supposed to be added to the word of God. So how does that relate to our verse? You'll, you'll see in a minute. It's okay. <laughs> I, heard it, I heard it said like this. Make sure you're doing, excuse me, make sure what you're doing meets the standards of God's word, not just what other Christians are doing or teaching. That's simple. Make sure that what you're doing line up with this, God's word, not what the church has done for a thousand years, not what man is te teaching you, right? It's supposed to line everything up with this. This is the standard for our life. And it's very easy for us to do more than what the standard says. Simple, right? Simple. But not really. I was reading through the book of Mark, and I found this. And you can turn there if you want to. It's in Mark chapter 7, verses 5 through 8. It'll be on the screens for you to read as well. This is Jesus talking 
uh, he was sharing, and, and the Pharisees came up, and they asked him a question. It says, so the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the traditions of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? Because they always wash their hands before they ate as part of their ceremonial stuff. He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it was written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings were merely human rules. You have let go of the commandments of God and are holding on to human traditions. Wow. Simple, right? Not really. Jesus said, hypocrisy is honoring God with your lips, but having your heart far from him. How easy is it for us to play church and to come in and, and act a certain way and talk a certain way? Because we know the word, right? We've been taught the word, at least from man's point of view. Hopefully you read this and rightly divide it, the word of truth for yourself. That's what we're supposed to do as disciples of Jesus Christ. But if all we do is talk the talk and we don't walk the walk, if it's not part of our heart, right? Then we're hypocrites. Ouch. I pointed at myself, by the way, when I said that. <laughs> I think it's very important that we don't just go through the motions in life. We take the time to examine the way that we're living and make sure that it lines up to God and his word. Examine the way we worship. Examine the way that we raise our children. Examine the way that we go to work. Examine the way that we talk to people. Examine the way that we study the Bible and make sure that we're doing things the way that the word says. You say, wow, that's, that could be really complicated and hard and take a long time to figure all that stuff out and all the little details. Yeah, it could. <laughs> it's a lifetime. It takes your whole life. It takes you getting into this and asking the Holy Spirit to help you rightly divide this thing and, and listen to it and, and read it and hear the word preached and, and, and examine the word that was preached to make sure it lines up with this over and over again, keeping yourself on track and in line with what God would have for you. Last, year, last week, Pastor Rick preached on Isaiah 61 and 2. Man, what a powerful message. In fact, the last two weeks have been game changers and eyes open messages. If you haven't heard them, they're all on our website, they're on YouTube, and um, you should listen to them again. Get them in the hands of your friends. They'll help anybody who's in church, out of church, and um, help you get your mind where it's supposed to be, your heart where it's supposed to be. And if you need those on CD or DVD, contact the church and get those. Amen? You're... Isaiah 61 and 2, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Amen. For behold, darkness has covered the earth, and deep darkness, or as Pastor said, gross darkness on the people, the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. We're dealing with people around us who are in gross darkness. And they're surrounded by darkness, as we are. And they can't see or understand how and why we believe. They don't get it. It hasn't been revealed to them. They're blinded by the God of this world, who's, who's the devil, little g. It explains a lot of what's going on even in our churches, right? Because of the gross darkness is on the people. And if we aren't living this separated life, or if we've been separated by God to come out of darkness and live in his light and to keep our hands clean, then we won't be accepted by him, right? No wonder people are so far from the light. They're in gross darkness. 
Pastor also talked about how we shouldn't attempt to add or subtract anything from the Word of God. And that came out of Revelation chapter 22, 18, and 19, where it talked about you can't add or subtract from the Scripture, from the revelation of the Word, from the, the prophecy of the Word, or your name can literally, literally be removed from the Lamb's book of life. That means that God doesn't recognize you as a Christian, someone who's going to make it through the gates. If you add things or subtract them from Scripture. Now, most, most of the church isn't adding or subtracting things from Scripture as much as they're hearing someone else add or subtract it from Scripture. And that's why it's so important as believers for us to be able to take, tear this apart. Not literally rip your Bible up, but tear this apart verse by verse and analyze it and, and rightly divide the word of truth and know the word and be able to hear the word and know that it's truth and know that it's not coming some, from some humanistic point of view. It's not coming from some man's mind based on a man's conscience, a man's set of doctrines and rules and standards for life because we're supposed to follow God's standards for life. Amen? Amen. Am I preaching the right crowd this morning? <laughs> Unfortunately, this isn't just happening in Hollywood. It's not just happening among our nation's liberals. It's happening in our churches. And this is a large reason, reason why America's church is so backslidden. Not, not us. Thank God, right? It's because of the teachings and the doctrines of man. It's because people are adding and subtracting things from Scripture. And that's why we're not the voice of the nation anymore. That's why we remain quiet. That's why we often condone the very things that completely are antichrist and against Scripture. So this puts a lot of Christians in a bad spot, wouldn't you think? If they go to church and they're supposed to be hearing from the clergy and the man of God a word from heaven and they, they're given man's words instead of God's words. They haven't been taught the standards of, of God, so they're doing things based on a man's point of view. And usually that, that feels pretty good, right? Because it's, it's like, yeah, I can do that. I can do that, yeah. That's a lot easier than what I read in here. So this may, by default, according to Jesus' words back here in Mark chapter 7, make a lot of people hypocrites. Point myself again. Let me help you. If you don't want to walk through life based on man's perspective and man's point of views, you have to have God's standard for life. You have to. Not an option for Christians. Am I helping this morning? Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. If you turn there. Everybody should know this verse. Are you there? Matthew 22, 7 says, Jesus said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. We're supposed to declare our separation unto God and declare our dependence on God and our love for him with all of our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. If you don't, have your heart and your soul and your mind lined up to the God's word, then you're not living this separated life unto God. It wasn't too long ago, before all of us were born anyway, but relatively, not too long ago, that a group of men wrote a document that changed the course of history. Those men were our founding fathers of this great nation, the United States of America. 
Most of us don't know much about them. I myself have a lot to learn. The document they wrote and signed with their lives on the line is the Declaration of Independence. I, I'm not going to ask them to raise their hand. I, I've, I've, um, I read it back in school, and I only just now recently read it again. And I was... My eyes were open to some things, for sure. It made me proud of our country and sad at the same time. This morning, I'd like to read uh, some sections from the Declaration of Independence. And I know it's you know, written in proper English, some of it, and uh, maybe hard to understand, but I'm just going to use a few sections, so please just be attentive and listen. It starts out like this. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station, to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitles them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. This is where I tied the two together, this verse that we talked about from 2 Corinthians and the, and the Declaration of Independence, this word, the separation. And here they are, they're talking about their separation from Great Britain and the king who was, you know, tyrannical and, and not allowing them to live according to God's standards. So I found some parallels here between the separation that God has for us and the separation that our country did when it was first formed. If I was to rewrite this paragraph we just read and reference it to the separation, it would say something like this. Do we have it on the screen? There we go. See, it says Steve's Declaration. <laughs> can you put the other background behind it so they can see it? There you go. All right. Okay. When in the course of spiritual events it becomes necessary for the called out ones to dissolve bands which have connected them to darkness... And to receive the salvation of Jesus Christ, the separate and holy station to which the new covenant by the blood of Jesus entitles them, a decent respect for the opinions or the humanity of mankind in its fallen state requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. The next piece of the Declaration of Independence that I'd like to read goes as this. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all the men, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I love this part. We have rights. You know, we have rights in the kingdom of God too, as, as the children of God. We have rights. God has called us out from darkness not just to live clean, but to have his power and his Holy Spirit. To be able to rise above the darkness and come out of the darkness and not be covered by the gross darkness that's covering the people. That's us. That's you and me. That's you and me. All men are created equal. God's perspective is that there's only one race, and that's the human race. Man's perspective is that there's many races. Man's perspective is that many races should be at odds with one another and be better than one another or worse than one another or a minor minority or whatever you want to call it. He created us all equal. He created us all in his image. What we choose to do with that image once we get it is up to us. We were all... in. We were all endowed by the Creator, Jesus, with certain unalienable rights. Among these is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I wrote these three things like this. The preservation of life on earth, eternal life in heaven, the liberty to live for Christ and by his word, and the pursuit 
of happiness that only comes under God's protection and blessing. These founding fathers were right on. They were right on. I mean, they pretty much should have, should have dropped scripture in there for most of this stuff. To secure the rights of the people of God, excuse me, to secure these rights, the people of God must maintain a relationship with their Savior. Not simply with their mouths, but with their hearts and with their minds. Right? For it is written, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That's not man's teaching. That came from Jesus. Declaration of Independence goes on from here to start stating a bunch of areas that they were impelled by to form a new country. Reasons why they wanted to be independent from, from Great Britain. And there were many reasons. And I found some reasons why we would be impelled to go forward and be separated. That's not supposed to be up yet, by the way. That's later. Thanks, Lynn. I found some scriptures that impelled me to come out and be separated unto the light of God. And these aren't going to be on the board, but just go ahead and listen to these. Romans 3.23. You guys know it? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What? These are like scriptures you use when you're getting saved, Pastor Steve. Yeah. These are the things that impel us to make the decision to come out from among them and be separate. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 10:10. 10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and to have it more abundantly. This abundant life we're supposed to have. Living the separated life in the light, not in the darkness. By God's standards, not by man's standards. In the last verse I put in here, Romans 12, 2, And do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We're supposed to change and transform and renew our minds so we're more like God and like his word and not like man. And you see great churches and huge multitudes of people turning to humanistic ideas and embracing the things that the, the liberals and the antichrist people are, are shoving down the world's throat right now. And you say, it must be right. There's thousands of people who say they're Christians following this. But it's a man-made idea. It's probably the doctrine of demons. But it's every bit humanistic and comes from man and not from God and not from his word. I'm not angry this morning, by the way. Declaration, Declaration of Independence has a lot more to say, but it, it ends with a couple of statements. And I've got some, um, they're going to be on the screens. You can put that one up now, Lynn. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America and General Congress assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world, that's God, for the rectitude of our intentions. Then it jumps down to the bottom. And for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, that's God helping us again, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. These dudes put everything on the line. This is a death wish. 
this is, a, this is a suicide letter. They had the king of Great Britain and all of his armies, which were stationed here at their throats instantly, writing this thing. It makes me wonder if we would have even an ounce of that much courage when it comes to standing up for what we believe in Jesus Christ and our separation into the light of Christ. So I rewrote those two paragraphs. And I'm not a scholar, okay? So I know my grammar is not perfect. I know these sentences could be better formed, but this is what came out of my heart, so... We therefore whose sins were washed by the blood of Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary in the sight of our Lord God and the supreme judge of the world do declare our separation from the world and its fallen nature. We declare our dependence on Jesus and the standards of the word. And for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of Our, of our divine providence. We pledge to our Lord and Savior Jesus our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. This declaration of independence was more than just a, a document. It was something that changed the course of history for a group of people. So they could be not just separated as a country, but I believe separated as separated unto God. So they could serve God and have righteous standards among the people. And that life could be preserved and liberty could be preserved and that they could have the pursuit of happiness in God. It was the establishing of the people and their hearts. So they could be separated to God. I believe we all ought to have our own declaration of this separation, our own declaration of our dependence on God. I'm not asking you to write one like I did. <laughs> this, this would be far from complete based, you know, in comparison to the, what they wrote for the Declaration of Independence, but... We have to make sure our standards are right with God. We have to make sure that we examine what we do and make sure that it lines up to God's word. We have to make sure that we're not just going through life without paying attention, just doing it based on man's standards and this is just the way society does, does things and this is what... I'm, you know, this is the, everybody watches the news, everybody listens to Hollywood, everybody reads the gossip rag... Everybody is okay with abortion and everybody's okay with, with um, same-sex marriage and everybody's okay with, you know, this liberal agenda and this antichrist movement. Everybody's okay with this happening in, in God's holy church. When it gets right down to it, your heart has to be connected and you have to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind or you're not living this separated life unto God. And you have to be very careful that you're not adding or subtracting things from God's word. You have to be very careful so your name is not removed from the book of life. It took some work for you to get it there. You had to believe, you had to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord so you can be saved. Keep walking it out, right? the declaration of our dependence on Jesus and his word. We have to examine our hearts. We have to examine the things we're being taught. 
and make sure they line up with Scripture. Our standards have to be based on God's Word and not on human ideas. Be careful who you let teach you. Don't just watch every YouTube video. Don't just watch every preacher on TCT. Don't just listen to everybody who's got a Bible in their hand. Who has a pretty smile. Hey, I'm not putting myself on a pedestal here. Remember I pointed at myself when I said hypocrite? The Bible tells us that in the last days, even the very elect would be deceived. Even those with educations and backgrounds and they'd be deceived. Don't let yourself be counted among those people. I thank God for a pastor who serves God and reads his Bible. I can't tell you how many times I'm, my jaw is on the floor at some of the stuff he, he says. He's, he's, the revelations that God's given him in, in the scripture and and, uh, you know, I went right back. As soon as he said that stuff on staff meeting, I went right back to the Word, and I found that verse in, in Mark chapter 7 when Jesus talking to the Pharisees and talking about their lips being towards God but their hearts being far from Him. I was rightly divided in the Word of truth. So use the Word of